Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and here are some new releases that I'm reviewing. Sorry for the glasses glare, um, it's not a contact kind of day, you know, sometimes you just can't be bothered to put in contacts, that's what today is today. Um, so bear with me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I actually started this vlog. This isn't a vlog, what I'm doing right now. It's not a vlog, this is a sit down video. However, I'm going to be inserting clips from a vlog that I started all the way in February. So coming into 2024, I really wanted to kind of change my content a little bit. I really wanted to make a video at least once a month talking about new releases that I'm excited to read. And then I wanted to vlog my experience reading them, right? Um, like once a month. I do not think that me vlogging, <laughs> vlogging like that is feasible once a month. I don't know, like some days I'm in the mood to vlog and some days I am not, I don't wanna be bothered. Um, and I really don't wanna put pressure myself and make filming not fun for me. Um, so I, barely vlogged anything for this video. And I have updates about certain books at the halfway point and then certain books at the end when I finished it. So this is just gonna be a sit down video of me talking about, I think five new releases that have come out since the beginning of this year that I really, really, really love. And I'm gonna be inserting clips for um, like my real time thoughts on when I finished it or when I'm halfway through the book. These five books have definitely been my favorite so far um, this year. There were a few books that I included in a like new releases reading vlog in January. So I'm not gonna be including those, like Whispers of the Deep by Emma Ham could definitely be on this list, but I already have like a whole entire dedicated vlog, like gabbing about that book and a few others for new releases in January because my new release vlog idea only really worked for one month and that's it. And now Ollie is itching. You good? So let's get into these books. Um, first, I'm gonna talk about Truthfully Yours by Kaden Armstrong. And I actually have a clip of me, I think, describing the book and my thoughts halfway through it. So I will show that now. This is a debut book by Caden Armstrong and I am like 50% of the way through it. It is really good. It came out at the beginning of February and I'm currently reading my arc for it. I've been having some migraines recently and so I haven't really gotten to like physically read books because I've done a lot of listening because I don't really get migraines with listening to books. Um, and so I finally have been making my way through this and I, really really like it i feel like it's such a good debut book like the writing it doesn't feel like she's like never written a book before this point this book is own voices for autism representation excuse the dog if you hear the dog barking i'm so sorry <laughs> um but our heroine here charlie she is autistic and our hero Paige is a famous actor so Paige is in this show that charlie loves um it's kind of like it kind of seems like star trek like i don't i don't remember the name of the show but it's fictional it reminds me of star trek this book starts out with charlie and her best friend going to basically like a comic con and they're going to this show's panel where they're going to be giving questions to actors on the panel ask them questions all that jazz so charlie is in line to give questions to the people on the panel by the way this is all in the prologue so i'm not like spoiling anything um but it really sets up the book she's in line and the little boy in front of her looks like 12 years old right and he like asks a question to the character who think of him kind of like as the darkling he's this very like mysterious character who is kind of like the bad boy villainous type you know and um charlie at that point was like "Ooh, he's like my crush on the show really love his character type right and there's been a lot of speculation online that the um writers of the show kind of are hinting that that character specifically is autistic so this little boy goes up and is like hi i don't remember his name but he's like hi i'm so and so i am autistic and i really love the way that you portray your character like what do you think what's your opinion on your character being autistic possibly this guy really just says some ableist stuff and oh it got my blood boiling and it got charlie's blood but bl blood goodness blood boiling she was not happy the boy like goes off and is like basically crying and she goes up to the mic she's next in line her question goes out the window that she had prepared she just goes off and tells off this guy like for saying what he did i was clapping my hands for her i was but then people like film like her outburst if you will that that's what people are calling it and she kind of goes viral online and gets bullied online 
for standing up to this guy who's like very famous, right? And like the show is defending this guy and all stuff is not taking up accountability. And then it jumps like months later. By the way, the hero is not that guy. I just wanna say that the hero is not that guy. He is another guy on the panel who was very worried about this heroine because she like ran off afterward very upset. And he hated all the bullying she was getting because he fully agrees with her, but he signed kind of like an NDA and he could, he can't speak out, like he cannot. And anyway, so he's another guy in the panel. He is not the guy that she was addressing that said the horrible ableist thing. So jumps months later where she decides to go on kind of like a work abroad trip, I think in Scotland. And she takes up the mantle of running a bookstore while its owner is on vacation. Little does she know that Paige, that actor's sister, is the owner that went on vacation. And so she's like staying in the apartment above the bookstore, taking care of the bookstore, taking care of the apartment and the cat that lives in it and everything. And then <laughs> she hears this person walk into the apartment and she basically attacks them like it hits them with a golf club because she's like, someone's breaking in. And she literally finds a famous actor on the door, like on the floor. And she's like, uh, what is going on? And she quickly calls the person she rent is renting from right now. And she's like, oh, that's my brother. <laughs> so they have to live in this apartment together because he, he has nowhere else to live right now. They're basically in forced proximity in this apartment. And that's all I want to say. I know that was a lot of talking about this, but it's really good so far. There's a lot of tension, tension and angst between the two. I really love the representation and the discussion of autism in here. A quote that I would love to read is from Charlie's perspective. And she's talking about like 50% of the way through, Paige is asking her questions about her autism, like wanting to get to know her on a more like deeper level and trying to just get to know her more and figuring out like what triggers her and what doesn't is just trying to be really respectful of her. She's talking to him and then she says, suddenly you have to explain yourself and then you deal with how many people aren't educated about your disability and how, S word, <laughs> society is for people like you. Then you have to go work through your own internalized ableism because we all have it. It's a lot to go through after being diagnosed. And I hope your cousin who is ADHD, he's talking about his cousin who is ADHD, was lucky enough to have his family there because it sucks going through it alone. I really love Charlie as a character and I really relate to her and the discussion of disability, especially with the internalized ableism comment. Like we all have it. It's really hard to desensitize yourself and like work through your internalized ableism. So I really relate to her. Unfortunately, I really relate to her. I'm really loving this representation and this story as a whole right now. So I can't wait to read more. I feel like this book is definitely a love letter to those who are neurodivergent and disabled. I feel like Kate and Armstrong made like a fantastic overarching theme of like, just because you're in that community doesn't mean that you're alone. The way that I felt halfway through this book is the way that I felt like after. I still think about this book. It's been months since I've read this. I think about it all the time. I really loved both of these characters and the journeys they went on individually and together as a couple. There's anxiety representation and um, autism representation. I wanted to mention that it's own voices as well. There's Scotland setting. It's a celebrity romance. It's forced proximity and it is definitely character driven. I really recommend this book if you have not yet. I thought this was an amazing debut. Next is Ready or Not by Cara Bastone. I did not make any clips for this. You can see like how chaotic my brain has been recently. I just haven't, I haven't been doing things, okay? Um, I needed to film this and I just, I didn't, okay? I remember I was listening to this book, I think a week or two ago at the grocery store. I feel like it's such a cute book to read in a grocery store to like listen to. I think both the narrators did an amazing job with this book. I love Cara Bastone and her writing. I love her writing. I love her characters. Um, I know a lot of people have read her like exclusive audiobooks that are on Audible Plus that have full cast narration, background noise, um, like graphic audios basically, but they're novella length and those are really fun. Um, but I also love her like full length books. I think they're amazing. I think I only have one more book to read from her and then I've read her entire backlist and I think she just does an amazing job. I really wanted to pick this one up because I knew that our heroine was pregnant and it's a friends to lovers romance, but the baby daddy is not our hero of this story. So this romance is between Eve and Shep. Eve finds out that she is pregnant from a one night happenstance by a guy who owns this bar where dogs are allowed. It's really, I, I love the bar setting, okay? She is going through some things. She is not expecting this baby whatsoever. And to top it all off, her best friend is going through some infertility things at the moment. And she can just tell it's breaking her friend's heart, even though her friend is there to support her every step of the way. She's not herself. Eve definitely feels that. She has another close friend, which is her best friend's brother. All three of them actually grew up together. 
um, and his name is Shep. And from the moment that he figures out that he was pregnant, he is like all in. This book is definitely Hero Falls First. He might have been in love with Eve since forever. I absolutely love this, the way that this man cares for Eve and like takes care of her every step of the way, including when it comes to the baby daddy and like what they're gonna do about him because he got on my nerves to no end. Some of the things that he was doing, like, ooh, he got on my nerves. Um, He's not a bad guy. I really, I feel like the baby daddy is a very complex character. I don't remember his name for the life of me, so I'm just calling him baby daddy. <laughs> um, But he's a very complex character and what he goes through is definitely something that a lot of people probably feel and they don't know how to express themselves and they don't know how to deal with these emotions and these new things going on in their life but i don't think it was handled the right way like he did not handle this the right way and so shep is there for eve in every way possible every single way possible and i absolutely adore friends to lovers romances and i felt like this was beautiful it was amazing i loved it i love all the caretaking all the little things that shep would do to make Eve's day a little brighter. Like it was so, so amazing. Then I would love to talk about The Friendship Study by Ruby Barrett. I actually have a full entire clip talking about this book. So I'll leave that to past Avery to talk to you about The Friendship Study, but let's just say this was a winner. I read The Friendship Study. This is by Ruby Barrett and it came out on February 13th. This cover intrigued me at first because that cover is beautiful. It's stunning, <laughs> so um, I was hooked. But this book is like my new favorite thing ever, probably. I love this book, okay. Uh, I wasn't expecting to. So this is about Lulu and Jesse. So they actually meet on a blind date at the beginning of this book. That doesn't really go the best. They're both in like the head spaces of, um, I don't know how to talk to people I don't know, which same, same. They're both in this kind of rut in their brains and talking to people. They're they kind of feel lost, especially with friendships. They, they feel very lonely, they don't have friends, but they also don't really know how to talk to other people. So like it doesn't, they, and the date doesn't really go well, like nothing happens afterward. And then they come back in contact with each other when they both agreed to be part of this friendship study. People, a part of this college that's in town are going to study a certain group of people and see how they form friendships and stuff like that. The main rule for this friendship study is like, you cannot be like romantically involved with anybody because it's a friendship study, but these two fall for each other. It's fine. So the two of them end up getting to know one another because they're part of this friendship study. They have to be vulnerable with one another. They end up falling in love. Like it is beautiful, but so hot also. Like this book is hot. Like talk about like scenes that last like pages long. Like it's full of int intimacy, longing. The way that this author writes, like these characters getting to know one another, but then also being intimate with each other was like, oh, it's like a perfect, Perfect balance, perfect blend in my eyes. There's amazing representation in here. I was not expecting whatsoever. It's own voices for ADHD, even though at the end of the book, there's like an author's note where the author says like, the heroine's never fully diagnosed with ADHD, but I have ADHD and like I kind of wanted y'all to see the world in her eyes for women that are often misdiagnosed or not diagnosed whatsoever with ADHD because of the different symptoms that they have than males who have ADHD. So there's that representation. The hero deals with chronic pain. He is a mobility aid user at points. He doesn't use his cane every time. He was in a car accident, I think a few years ago. He was a firefighter who got in a car accident. He had to have surgery on his leg. So he deals with chronic pain. He's also bi. So there's that representation. There's just a lot of like goodness in here like I love this book so much I need more people to read it like right now I don't even know what else to say about it because I just want everyone to go read it and experience how amazing it is it like by yourself because I don't want to spoil anything like I need a copy I need to put it on my shelves I'm not buying books right now but like when I do when I let myself buy a book this will be the book that I pick next because it is so beautiful on the outside this cover is stunning inside is beautiful as well this author is Fan freaking tastic. Her writing, it's so good. I now need to go pick up like all of her books now. There is, I see on her Goodreads, like an FF, like a sapphic, like chef romance. Are you joking? So I need to go read that, I guess. But she has only like two books I haven't read. Sure, backlist is very short, um, but she has like two other books out compared to this one, but this one is like so good. I need more people to read it, please. I wasn't expecting to love this book as much as I did, but I did. I don't really know what else to say. Like, I loved this. I need more people to read it, please. It had me like in a chokehold. This audiobook was fantastic. I listened to the audio. I listened to it in like two days. Normally my breaks don't work when like I'm eating a snack or eating a meal, lunch, whatever the case may be, or when I'm at home eating. 
I'm like an iPad kid. I need to have something to watch while I eat. It helps me de-stress, okay? Um, helps me just become more relaxed um, before I have to get into the grind of doing something stressful again. For the past two days, I haven't been watching anything. I've literally been just having these in my, the, the audio book in my ears and just eating and like looking at nothing, like just eating and listening. And I never do that. I never do that. I feel like this book was a success and I need more people to read. I keep saying that, but please go pick up this book because... I loved it. Next, I have Darkest Sins by Neva Altaj. This is her ninth book in the Perfectly Imperfect series. I do have an update clip for this, um, I think like 25% of the way through. So I will leave that here and then I'll come back to wrap up my thoughts about it. I'm about 25% of the way through Darkest Sins by Neva Altaj. This is her newest book in her Perfectly Imperfect series. It comes out at the end of March. If you didn't know about Neva Altaj's Perfectly Imperfect series, this is a mafia romance series that's a little bit on the shorter end that I feel like highlights voices you don't normally see in mafia romances. You have a lot of people who are disabled and you have multiple like different chronic illnesses, disabilities, and her books really highlight mental health, which I love. I don't really know what it is about this hero. Like we haven't had like a, a name for what like he has, but like he doesn't really have emotions. Like he doesn't really feel anything at all. Um, and he's like baffled by this heroine who like smiles and laughs. He's like, what can make a what can make someone do that? So that's like his brain right now. The heroine is the daughter to the head of a Costa Nostra mafia family. And her dad's like, oh, we're gonna marry you off soon. So she's kind of like getting ready for that. But she also loves her job at the vet clinic. And that is kind of where our story starts. Our hero is like a hitman. And he does this hit on this place at the beginning of this book. His informant doesn't tell him like, oh, there's more people there than you thought. So he actually gets injured. I think he gets stabbed. No, he gets shot because she has to take the bullet out of him. Yeah, he gets shot and he's like laying in the street and the heroine is like driving by and she can't help but help him and brings him to the vet clinic that she works at and patches him up. Ever since that point, he has been stalking her, like full blown stalking her. Then she can feel someone watching her, but she, she doesn't know who it is. She doesn't know what's going on. And yeah, I'm 25% of the way through and he is full blown stalking this woman. Even though he, like, there's a point where he, she's like, are you stalking me? He's like, no, I'm not stalking you. I'm not stalking you. Like, dude, you've been watching her for months. You are stalking her, sir. <laughs> I really love this series and I just feel like this one's gonna be a great one. I don't know why I'm having this feeling that it's gonna be a really good one. Cause Neva's men, are like unhinged, but unhinged for the heroine. Unhinged for their heroine, okay. Um, and I'm actually really looking forward to the next book in the series. If it's about this heroine sister, the heroine sister I think has vitiligo, I think that's what it's called, um, where um, you start to lose pigmentation in certain parts of your skin and she's embarrassed by it. So she wears like long sleeves and basically like skirts that go all the way to your feet 24 seven and she doesn't wear bright colors. She doesn't wanna bring attention to herself. Um, and I have an inkling who her romance might be with. And if it's not her stepbrother, like, I feel like that was a missed opportunity by Neva, okay, for her book, okay. Like, I need, I need that one. So um, I'm really liking this and it's, her, her books are always very fast to read. So I'm really liking that. It has been a few weeks since I have read this book. And I think I said in my clip, like, oh, I think this is gonna be an amazing one. I thought it was amazing, right? It was great. It was a good read. I do not think it's my favorite book in the series just because I don't think anything can really compare to Broken Whispers in my eyes. <laughs> because that one is so good. Um, but I thought that this was still an amazing one. I really loved the like stalker element. This man is like full blown stalking our heroine and he just doesn't, he doesn't, it doesn't register to him that he's stalking her. Um, but I love just how obsessed he was and the fact that for years they could not like stop thinking about each other and they had to always look out for each other and see if they were in the shadows. Like, ooh, it was delicious in that aspect. I think where um, my love for it wasn't as high as I anticipated was when the hero reveals himself and his name. I think the heroine gets threatened at some point in this book. And there's also a time jump. I forgot about that. There's a time jump in this book. So I was not, I did not know about that, um, but I don't want to spoil anything, but there's one point in here. Well, well, like the whole book when he's stalking her, when they know about each other, like she doesn't know his name does not know his name, knows nothing. And then in the second chunk, second half of the book, the heroine gets threatened and the hero's like, oh, all bets are off. I am putting myself into her life right now. And the way that he goes about it isn't necessarily my favorite. And I felt like that part could have been a little bit longer. But other than that, I thought it was a great read. I think it's a great addition to this series in general. And my last 
last book for this video is Only and Forever by Chloe Liza. This is the last book in the Bergman Brothers series and it has been long awaited. This is Vigo and Tallulah's romance. Can I just say how hard I related to both of these characters? Like both of them? I love them. And I... Okay, you read a lot about in romance books, you read a lot about these very fit men who want these fit skinny women. Okay, that happens in real life a lot. That happens in books a lot. One of the reasons why I think I love romance books so much is because you truly get to see like a different side to things. You get to kind of experience things through these characters. So you have Vigo um, absolutely in love with Tallulah and the way that she looks and um, all of her curves. And I was obsessed with him. I was like, oh my gosh, I, I need a man like him. And it feels like, honestly, like those men don't exist. <laughs> like not to throw a pity party, I'm not, but I'm just saying like, it feels like sometimes those men do not exist in real life. So we have to write about them in romance books. And it saddens my heart a little bit, but also makes me happy being able to read that and imagine that that is real. <laughs> um, because I feel like that is a rarity um, just from personal experience. But I absolutely love Tallulah and the way that she loves herself and fully braces herself. And I love the representation here. She has type one diabetes and the way that Vigo is so respectful of her and her um, diabetes. I loved in him always making sure like where her port is and to, I think it's called a port. I'm so sorry, tell me if I'm wrong. Um, but always make sure where um, it is on her body to make sure he doesn't move it or jostle it or whatnot. And there's one night when, I didn't even talk about the summary of this book. I'm just gabbing away. Um, anyway, so let me go back. This is the romance between Tallulah and Vigo, like I said. So Vigo is the last Bergman sibling who has not found his person. And um, he's absolutely obsessed with romance books, loves romance, has kind of helped nudge a few of these couples in the past books to be together. Like he loves love, he's obsessed with it. And at the beginning of this book, he's kind of sad. He's like, when is it gonna be my turn? When am I gonna have my person? And these two characters actually met years ago when they were freshmen in college. They actually were in the same college class. Tulula wasn't necessarily the nicest to Vigo and he tries to put a smile on everyone's face, but then he ended up leaving that college and going somewhere else. Anyway, um, turns out Tulula is the sister to Charlie. Charlie is Ziggy's best friend. Ziggy is Vigo's sister. So basically Vigo has a sister named Ziggy. Ziggy has a best friend named Charlie and Tallulah is Charlie's sister. I know that's a lot of like inner workings, whatever. <laughs> Tallulah is an author. I think she's a thriller writer if I'm not mistaken or a mystery writer. And um, Vigo needs help around the bookstore he recently opened. It's a romance bookstore and he has a kind of like apartment kind of attached to the bookstore and he's like okay if you help me around the bookstore I'll help you with the book and so that's kind of like what happens they get in forced proximity they have to stay together kind of like roommates and then they're also falling for each other they're doing like activities and things together and yeah they end up falling for each other they already were like kind of into each other and then it gets like exacerbated with the forced proximity which I absolutely love so what I was saying before is one of my favorite scenes is Tulula has um a really bad night with her blood sugar and um, Vigo is there to take care of her every step of the way. And it was, oh, it was so heartwarming. Like, I love that. I, I'm a sucker for caretaking scenes and Chloe Lisa knows how to do it, like in the best way. <laughs> I thought this was a great conclusion to the Bergman Brothers. Um, I definitely want more. <laughs> like, I want more. I think with all like the babies happening, like I want a second gen. <laughs> second gen so hard. I don't know if she's gonna do that. I have no idea. Um, but I love this book and um, I definitely recommend this whole series. Anyways, so how much those are some new releases that I think y'all should check out. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a flower emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.